Hello, welcome to the Art Channel. Today, myself and Joshua are at Kettle's Yard, a gallery in Cambridge, which is part of the University of Cambridge. It's a collection of cottages put together into a home by Jim and Helen Ede. What's remarkable about this collection is the way it resembles still a home, while at the same time being a collection of significant artworks assembled by Jim Ede over the course of his life. So we're standing in front of a very beautiful small Miro painting made in 1927 called Tick Tick and it is typical of these beautiful odd biomorphic images that he made on this familiar uh, blue background. The paint is kind of scrubbed into the ground um, and he's interestingly incorporated the title of the painting into the piece of work. So you have this uh, small yellow form, something that looks a bit like a fork, maybe a spider, things that perhaps allude to flags. They're familiar and they're unfamiliar. The painting incorporates onomatopoeia. The tick tick is meant to represent the sound of horses hooves. And it's full of this kind of crawling motion that Miro evokes in these surrealist paintings of these little sort of insect-like creatures that move across the surface. And what's also interesting is the way in which Jim Mead quoted this painting as representing balance. He said that if you put your finger over each of these three dots, the whole painting shifts and there's a kind of tilting effect. And then lastly, I should just mention how Jim Mead would include a lemon in the room as an echo of the yellow in the painting. And I think that plays into the idea of paintings and objects and found objects yeah. all curated within a domestic space. Everything in the painting is necessary and everything in the space is necessary. It's like a huge jigsaw. At the head of the stairs, we have this uh, wonderful work by Barbara Hepworth, which I think is really one of the highlights of the collection. It's called Three Personages from 1965, and it's carved in black slate. And you get that very smoky, soft, lustrous quality to the polished slate on a base here. They are very similar, these pieces, but they've got subtle differences in terms of the edges and the rounding corners. And they seem to circulate each other on top of the plinth. And she takes the idea of figuration through to abstraction. So you have three, something based on the human figure, but as you say, paired right down. And because she takes away detail, you end up focusing on the slight differences in making between the three sort of um, constituent parts. I think she was quite interested in human relationships, how people stand when they talk, um, how intimate or, uh, or otherwise they are. So I think it's quite an interesting evocation. We're always going to think of people, you know, when you see a piece like this, you can't get away from that. She did work a lot in Cornwall, around St Ives, and I think was quite interested in the standing stones. I think there's also a reference to them. We're looking at a self-portrait by Christopher Wood, painted in 1927 in Paris. And Christopher Wood was a great prodigy, still in his 20s. He also has a sort of tragically early death in 1930. But he presents himself here in this very sort of confident uh, manner as an artist in training, d in development. We've got his box of paints here with a palette knife. He holds, gesturing with the paintbrush. And he's wearing this Harlequin sweater, which makes uh, an allusion to contemporary interest in the circus and in clowns. You're right, he was very interested in, in performance, in theatre, in the circus, and there was his interest in uh, that way of performing. His um, wonderful uh, pullover um, picks up the same palette as the cityscape, as, as this claustrophobic uh, Paris skyline behind him. And he's still, I think, searching for becoming the artist we'll know him as a little bit later. And you're absolutely right, it's, it's, it's a calling card, it's a visual CV, isn't it? There he is declaring himself. It's almost life-size. He's incredibly confident. It's a pretty macho position he's taken up on that veranda. This is a great piece of PR, isn't it? He is a young man um, declaring himself on the scene. He's giving you all the props and clues that you need to know that he has arrived and he's going to, uh, go to do great things. This piece, Bird Swallowing a Fish, from 1914, is made by Gaudia Breschka. 
and he's made of plaster. It's the most extraordinary piece of work, actually. It's, um, it's, you can figure it out in that you can see that it's one animal swallowing another animal, but also it has echoes of cubism. Uh, he was very interested in the vorticist movement and the idea of the machine age. So it, it has a kind of unnaturalistic feel about it, and it doesn't look natural. It looks like uh, something constructed. Um, I love the collision between this fish that resembles a, a missile and the bird that's vainly sort of struggling to swallow mm. this enormous like plug mm. of flesh. And it's a metaphor too, isn't it? A kind of Darwinian struggle mm. between two living forms over um, kind of life itself. And it's placed here on top of a sort of unconventional plinth made from a stump mm. of wood. So what do we learn by visiting Kettle's Yard in Cambridge? Well, you come to witness and experience this very distinctive aesthetic and interest in British modernism. The danger of any house museum is that it can feel like a time warp, mm. as if you're walking through someone's life who is no longer present. But actually, there's such a strong spirit here in the home that continues to draw uh, visitors. And they were rewarded by almost kind of spiritual belief in the value of art, of materials, and of form itself. I think there is a really strong interest, as you say, not just in the visual aspect of the objects and the paintings, but in the materiality, uh, where things are made, how they're made, and honesty in materials. And yes, you do get a sense of the spiritual, but I have to say, um, I see a lot of retail outlets that mimic this kind of aesthetic. It's a very, it's become again a very fashionable aesthetic. If you've enjoyed this film, please do subscribe to the channel and support our new films. You can follow us on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.